friends, uh, today for the first session of today's event, we have Dr. K. Shannu Sundaram, uh, Professor of uh, Engineering Design Division at Anna University College of Engineering, Hindi, and also the additional director of the AIFRG Institute for CAD CAM. Um, he has uh, more than uh, 20 plus years of experience in his uh, teaching and the research area. His uh, field of research area are additive manufacturing, CAD CAM, electromagnetic metal forming, engineering design and product design, unconventional machining, and the composite materials. He has 20 plus uh, publication, journal publication in his credit, and he uh, presented papers in 36 plus international conferences and 11 plus national level conferences. He authored a book on hydraulic pneumatics by H. and Co. And he guided uh, six uh, candidates for uh, PhD, and uh, he is now guiding six, uh, seven uh, candidates for his PhD, for their PhD research. And uh, he got uh, several uh, patents and uh, awards from uh, government of India and other state government and private sectors. Uh, I'm having great pleasure in welcoming Dr. K. Shandu Sudaram for today's first session. And uh, on behalf of Murugappa Polytechnic College and Department of Mechanical Engineering, I'm having great pleasure in welcoming Dr. K. Shandu Sudaram. And I am also uh, offer my uh, sincere apologies for delay in starting the program. So the program uh, will continue by the introduction of the today's session by Dr. Shanmu Sudaram and then we will break for uh, the common FTP around 11, 10, 11, 15 and then we will uh, continue the program after the inauguration over by 8. Welcome sir, Dr. Shanmu Sudaram sir, please sir. Yeah, so is it audible? Yes sir, audible sir. Yeah, for all the participants of this faculty development program, I yeah. want to welcome you. And uh, probably uh, this is one of the topics that we are been talking in the field of mechanical engineering, which is totally a kind of a revolution that we are going to expect in the future. So as I could see the entire faculty development program, the different topics are being uh, segregated. I have the pleasure of introducing you about the rapid prototyping, 3D printing, additive manufacturing, solid free form, whatever they call it, what does it mean and how it differs and where the technology is today. And uh, with respect to the design aspects, I'm just going to give you a very small introduction of how you have to look at when you are looking at using this technology. So when you are going to think about uh, the 3D printing, so is the slides visible for you? Yes, sir, slides is visible. Okay. So uh, everybody are talking today, even in the newspapers about 3D printing that, 3D printing this. So when we look at the 3D printing, it is not confined to the development that happens only in the mechanical engineering, automotive engineering, or any field that is related to mechanical engineering. But today we see even houses are being 3D printed, foods are being 3D printed, the jewelries are being 3D printed. And in the future, we are going to have 3D printer at home, similar to the laser printer. So how it has evolved, where it all started, so as we know, when you are going to be in the product design, any product designer wants to have the proof of concept, to understand, to communicate to all the people who are around them, how is concept, how the model is going to look like, which we naturally use the term called prototyping. But the conventional way in which the prototypes have been made for a very long time, as you could see, they used clay, probably the days we remember. And thereafter, probably small, small developments in materials, those waste, that all those things are what we can think of making it. But once the 1960s and 70s, the computers and integrating of computers, developing the CAD, everything got evolved. There is every possibility that we can integrate the lasers, integrate the development in materials, integrate the CAD system and come out with making prototyping quite faster, thereby the term rapid prototyping came. And thereafter, many technologies, it is the truth that when there are, whenever there is an opportunity, people think of 
all the possibilities so naturally there are different ways and how they are classified and just to give you an introduction looking into the content of the faculty development program so these seven apart from this there are many there are also bioprinting there are also other 4d printing and future 5d printing also going to come up but still the contents of the faculty development program has with respect to liquids with respect to solids and with respect to the powders so these seven are going to give, be given very briefly and with development in materials how we are going to do that so as i already mentioned when the cad system has come you know we have been using basically the autocad for drafting thereafter the modeling technologies came so we had the pro e the catia the creo everything and once everything was made possible then you are going to have the visualization in the virtual environment but looking in the virtual environment however it is cannot give you the confidence and the feel that you touch and see it so the moment the people were able to develop the physical prototype using the cad model the technology was called rapid prototyping and today when the prototyping was made with just polymeric materials it was good enough to be called rapid prototyping but when it is possible to use the real same 316l steel material or titanium or any other even high temperature materials to be fused are sintered and made into a final finished product then why not it be called as additive manufacturing that's how we rephrased the manufacturing process from prototyping it became manufacturing and as i already mentioned you when there is going to be still further developments you know whatever that comes to your mind be it complex be it most critical what was never ever possible using the conventional manufacturing process if i can design it and since as you know this is the entire process where i add one layer upon another layer and by which if i just go i am built a final finished product which not any other process can ever even be possible even today we call it a solid free form manufacturing so with that we could see a beautiful graphical representation you see a hand and as the number of pixels you could see the triangular spaces so that is the way in which any prototype model gets converted into dot stl files so the more finer it is the leftmost that you could see is more finer it's almost having all the intricacies of a hand and you you could even see and visualize veins passing through the hand so if you are going to have finite things then you would be able to build it at a very slow speed but if you wanted to be in the earlier stage just make it we try to do it with limited resolution and thereby you do it quite faster so how it is all more relevant today when we talk about the regular manufacturing process which is quite synonymous to only subtracting the actual raw material that you are going to take it either from casting or forging remove all the unwanted things and come out with the final finished product as you could see today even you have 20 is to 1 what you buy is almost 500 pounds and the finished product is just 250 pounds so all the 4750 pounds are naturally a waste but if i am going to use any form in which i have a sheet metal i have a wire all those things i can just do it in less than one is to two ratios so this is the thought process of the need of evolution of 3d printing so any raw material that comes in different forms be it in the form of liquid be it in the form of your wires be it in the form of your sheets you are going to use a software and a hardware whereby each individual layer data you are going to use it and allow the material to flow so that is going to be converted into the finished product 
So when you look at the complexity of the geometry, naturally there are going to be something called the support materials. So the support materials are the only waste that you're going to see, which is once again, as compared to the conventional process, it's one is to 20. So less is the wastage. So you could see any conventional manufacturing process, you go for uh, milling, drilling, all the finishing operations and get it converted. But this milling, turning, drilling, CNC are going to be definitely uh, huge waste producers. We just call it as trash. And this trash has no value. And think of materials like the titanium. You know, the cost of titanium of one kilogram converted into just 100 grams. The 900 scrap do not have any relevance to the actual final cost that you purchase. So when you are going to look at it, then when you think of using this, when you could directly manufacture, as you could see from this graph, almost 16 percentage of the production today are directly used. And in the latest OLS report, this OLS report are the ones that consolidate the entire usage of the technologies. And as of today, the additive manufacturing process are hugely used. And you could see the functional prototyping, as I was mentioning, for testing during the product design. And certain parts, as you could see, today all people wanted to have customized cases for the probably your cell phone or your iPad or whatever it is. So those customized product development is the next second major user of this technology. But as I could see, you have the metal, the polymers, the cosmetic, which could be the ceramics, all these things sharing different uh, roles in the additive manufacturing process. So with this brief introduction. Sir, uh, sorry for the interruption, sir. Yeah. Uh, can we break now for the inaugural, sir? Yeah, yeah, no issue. Continue by 11.30, sir. Okay, so thank you. And also a request to, from the parchment to maximize the slide and slide view mode, sir. Okay, okay. Maybe one Maybe I'll put the entire screen, then I'll try to take it. Now, can you see it? Sir, is it in the full slide now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is right. Right, sir. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah. so, when you think of making customized implants for your dental applications, for your bone scaffolds, or today we are talking about. Uh, the orthopedic applications where uh, the bio inspired designs for low weight and biomimics are one other field in the biomedical engineering are when you wanted to make your customized architectural artifacts where uh, you could see those tough structures could never be ever thought about including uh, uh, having these kind of uh, things in the food industry are if you wanted to have a complexity that was never possible or dreamt of in the conventional manufacturing process you could see the nesting inside the nest so those kind of things are constantly variable geometries then if you have any design with you where you don't want uh, the injection molding tool then this, we have a technology called rapid tooling. So the moment you make the investment casting tool, this 3D printing itself is today making a substitute. As I already mentioned with respect to the architecture, when you are going to think of developing the small scale models, then this is going to give to the exact scaled down at a very faster speed. So. Uh, in product design, if you are uh, at the proof 
of concept are at the end stage where you wanted to make functional prototyping designs then you can make all these kind of uh, functional prototype using polymeric materials or metal components for automotive applications we are able to do it and uh, as i was al already mentioning today there are lot of biomedical applications where customization is the need and unfortunately most of the implants are these kind of requirements with disabilities are not mostly addressed in the indian scenario but when you talk about the, the america you could see for even the paralympic persons they are able to have high performance these kind of wheelchairs which are lightweight supreme in design and anything that you look at it is ever a possibility so these kind of things are what we are supposed to think about it and all that you have to have is your vision and dream so you can start with your computer model and whatever you dream about it you can have it printed so that design freedom the creativity that you wanted to have the innovation that you wanted to introduce can always be done on the cat model so you know just making small modifications to the existing if you wanted to redo things the tooling cost the time associated with the finishing everything is a big issue but once you think about uh, this technology it is always a possibility and with that the performances become higher you have the satisfaction of being unique and customized and when you talk about the future when people are talking about the health you wanted to have calorie specific food and dose based pharmaceutical requirement so you can think of using and making very beautiful very interesting foods are this can be integrated where not just one component at least 10 15 components in the build air volume can be printed so that is the freedom that you have when you are going to use this technology and uh, the size is once again the greatness that we can look at it so you could see the size of the parts as small as the nail of your thumb or as big as you wanted in some of the specific applications for testing anything you can print it so when you think about uh, this 3d printing we are been hearing about this we know that there are different uh, materials that we see as the finished product but from where it started how it came it all depends on the raw material so the raw material as it all started was with the liquid where the first of the technology that was patented as well as commercialized and came into the industrial application was the stereolithography and of course digital laser light processing is one of the technology which is of limited use specific to the use in the jewelry making and with respect to the powders when the possibility of making the lasers not photopolymerize the liquid but to sinter and fuse the materials that are in the powder form specifically initially started with the polymeric materials then slowly went on to ceramics then went and today we have the metals we started with selective laser sintering and today we are having any process that even your electron beam can melt and fuse and with respect to solid you can convert it either into wires or into sheet and based on that the most common and predominant almost 60 percentage of the entire 3d printing industry uses this fdm whereas there is one other technology where you are going to have the sheets as the basic raw material form that comes as sheet stacks and you try to make it into final product which is called laminated object manufacturing so the introduction to sla fdm lom sls electron beam and 3d printing is what i have planned for this initial introductory class parallelly with at every point of time 
how the design freedom can be used so how it all started so when you think about you just have the look at the entire uh, graphic that is available there is a bath where you are going to have the liquid polymers so this liquid polymer you are going to have and in that you have the elevator platform which is going to be on the top with just one thickness that can be converted into solid when the laser is being focused by using the mirroring system so when one layer of your entire cad model that you see on the computer screen of that particular slice 2d is being made to pass automatically these liquid which are going to be converted from monomer to a polymer becomes almost like a solid and thereafter you have a recoater blade it moves and makes it smoother your elevator platform moves one step down to the entire possible thickness that the laser can fuse second layer is formed your elevator platform moves down still further the data of the third layer comes you just focus the laser it solidifies at every point at the end of uh, the layer particular layer you just uh, use your recoater blade make it super smooth and you keep lowering down at the end of the entire uh, build process you take it out you just take the product remove it by using simple sharp tools like your knife from the platform which is going to be perforated and use your alcohol bath to just remove what are the unwanted things and in this you could see there is going to be a hole in the right side of your particular product so though the liquid that is surrounding the green one which is going to be the actual product could be acting as a support structure for the structure that is formed on the top there is every possibility if it is visualized in a 3d profile through the thickness that it can deform because the weight of the product that is on top of the hole could make the hole to become oval along the x axis so there is every additional possibility which we call it as the support structure so the same support structure like what we call it as reinforcements can be designed after your 3d modeling before going to the slicing using the pre processing of your hardware where the hardware have the, the freedom to have the limited support material so that the total time of build can be reduced so naturally once uh, the entire part is built it is taken out from the resin bath the liquid photopolymeric tank you just eliminate all the resins that are around the actual solid part remove your support structures keep it in your microwave kind of uv oven which is once again the light that passes if there is any uncured liquids it gets completely converted into solid form and thereafter you can go for coloring and people to make it still more polished use the sand paper to have as you could see when there is going to be a curvature with tight geometries the staircase effect could be there so you can make it super smooth by either allowing the wax to pass through it or make it super smooth thereafter go for painting so this is what i have been talking about so you could see on the right side the first layer being formed the beam focuses and allows the first layer finish your first layer with the recoater blade move your elevator down form the second layer move your recoater blade to the exact thickness of the entire slice you are going to build it so you keep building layer upon layer upon layer and the technology is called stereolithography and it was actually charles hull who invented this technology but there is one other technology called projection stereolithography where 
the CAD model that you could see on the down, you are going to have the entire layer being photo masked and only that particular things, similar to your X-ray, you are going to have those X-ray alone completely at a single stroke. If you are going to think of laser, you know it is going to be of a very small uh, nano size light that is going to be allowed to pass. But in this case, the entire UV beam is going to be focused and wherever it is having white, it is allowing to immediately photo mask. Automatically, the entire layer is formed in one single stroke, not like your regular SLA process. So Chuck Alchuk was the gentleman who pioneered and he was able to found the system as of today, the 3D systems, which is the market leaders in the entire 3D printing industry. And you could see to qualify the product design of the entire alloy wheels that you could see at the back of them, where the entire alloy wheel design, the shape, the size, the geometry, everything can be printed. And when you are looking at the entire uh, print, as you could see, there is going to be the table, which is going to have length and breadth and through thickness, if it is going to be the entire thickness through which you can drop down. So that is going to be the build volume. And if you can make a single component of this size, one can be made. But if you are going to have small components, 10 to 15, that can be filtered into the entire build volume, a length to breadth to height, you can fix it. And many different complex geometries can be built at the same time. So as of today, the sizes are huge as compared to the initial sizes. So 1.5 meters to 0.75 meters to 550 mm, almost uh, 600 mm is what they can use it. And in most of the cases, rather than the DLP scanning technology, it is usually the SLA. So the sizes are as low as 0.004 inches and uh, any materials that can be photopolymerized, which are having the sensitivity to get converted to polymers from monomers can be used. And that is where there are many commercial names that are given to the polymers and the companies like Materialize, M-A-T-E-R-I-L-I-S-C, and 3D systems, they themselves provide the materials. And uh, since this is way back in 1980s, the patent is already over and many people have started to fabricate and make their own SLA printers. And those printers that are going to be available in the commercial market are relatively huge, somewhere around uh, uh, 10 to 15 lakhs you get very good SLA printers. So let me show you the video of SL is the uh, video uh, visible yes sir yes sir yes sir it is yes sir do you hear the sound also please yes sir yeah then i yes sir Stereo lithography is a rapid prototyping process used to create parts from 3D CAD data in a matter of hours. SLA is a highly accurate additive manufacturing process and may also be referred to as rapid prototyping or 3D printing. Models created with this technology are typically used as concept models to perform and fit studies or as master patterns molding techniques. The SLA process begins when CAD data is sliced in cross sections or layers, typically about 6 thousandths of an inch thick. This data is then transferred to an SLA additive manufacturing system, containing a vat of UV durable photopolymer. The machine begins to build a part one layer at a time. Each layer is constructed from an ultraviolet laser that is directed by X and Y scanning mirrors. Thank you. 
as the laser traces the cross section on the surface of the resin, the liquid material is hardened out of contact. Once the layer is complete, the build platform is indexed down to make room for the next layer. A refiller blade moves across the surface, ensuring a thin coat of fresh liquid resin is evenly spread over the object. The laser continues to trace and form each layer on the previous layer, building to the bottom up. The completed part is then carefully removed from liquid and separated from the platform. The chemical bath removes excess resin and the part is cured in an ultraviolet oven. Any support structures are removed at this time. With numerous hand sanding and professional paint options available through service providers such as Solid Concepts, Stereolithography has become an excellent economic choice for rapid appearance models. A wide variety of industries have embraced SLA, including medical, automotive, entertainment, aerospace, and consumer products. So now the slide is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you could see the size of the parts that can be manufactured has come down. So even the micro electromechanical systems where the stereolithography has become micro stereolithography, where the size of the parts, you could see it is in microns, 200 microns, one microns. So those kind of structures that we are talking about can also be made. And when you're talking about rapid tooling, there is also one other case where you have embedded toolings. So those kind of things are also being uh, tried out in the research papers and are al already being used in the aerospace applications. So the micro stereolithography took uh, another 10 years. So it was Ikuta who was making this in uh, as low as 100 microns with good accuracy and finish with uh, just one to two micron uh, uh, perfections. As you could see, uh, the size of the Eiffel Tower with all its intricacies can be built. And uh, whereby the polymers, which was initially with certain viscosity, has been brought very low to six centipoise as compared to the viscosity of the one that is actually used in the initial stereolithography was 2000 centipoise. So that is how the SLA process work. And that is one among the liquid based 3D printing technology, which initially started as the first 3D printing technology. And parallelly, in the late 1980s, this laminated object manufacturing came. So, you know, when we are going to have a book unused with another five, 10 books on top of it, and when you try to remove it, you could see because of the pressure, there is every possibility that the pages get stuck together. And if you at all, everybody has watched how the lamination process happens, you have the actual certificate, a thin white film on top and on bottom, you just pass it through a heated roller where you have the temperature as well as the pressure being given. And there is going to be a special glue which makes it to adhesively join together. So naturally the same, that lamination is what being taken and done here. So as I said, if you are going to have any sheet of material, be it paper, be it cardboard, be it even an aluminum foil that you can see in the form of the rolls are made to pass through the build table and any CAD data of a particular layer is known, similar to the CO2 laser that was seen in the SLA with the UV laser. This CO2 laser with low power is having the sufficient energy focused with the CAD particular slice data to cut the entire thing on one single stroke. So similar to your DLP, here, only the outermost geometry is cut wherever there are going to be internal geometries, like as you could see here, a hole, you cut it. So you are going to have the build volume finally 
converted into a cube or a cuboid how it is happening is the geometry of that particular layer is cut around it you form a kind of a boundary so that boundary you are going to see with respect to the orientation of the entire product so if you think of a regular uh, cylinder or a sphere it is quite easy you know you can fit it but if you think of a tree to be built if you think of any possible casting tool to be made then you know with a particular orientation not keeping it in exact x axis not keeping it in y axis with respect to the space limitation you can keep it even at a 45 degree inclination with respect to that orientation if you know what is going to be the maximum perimeter that is required apart from the cad of that particular layer you form the outermost boundary uniform for all the layers thereupon the heated rollers passes it fuses with the previously formed layer whatever the material that is been cut in the form of the rectangle or the square is been taken on the right side which is rolled the second layer comes the particular geometry from the cad model of that particular slice you cut it you form the perimeter and the regions between the perimeter and the actual part of that particular layer you are going to nest it we could see vertical and horizontal lines why this is been made you know at the end of the process the final block is going to look either like a cube or a cuboid if you wanted to remove and take the final product it should be made possible that is why we call that as nesting so i forgot to mention in the sla itself the layers you are going to personally allow it as the layers that can be taken it off so you call those layers as sacrificial layers so that at the end of it when you remove it from the platform you can take it off it is not going to be part of your actual product so you call that as scrap support material so initial few probably not exceeding 10 layers both in sla and your lom or anything you make it as support material and once you do it at the end of it you remove as you could see the cubic technologies that was formed out of the elisis corporation's patent way back in 1990s was one among the leaders and as you could see today there are many other corporations globally which can make lom uh, easy possibility and as you could see some of the slice models specifically for the study purpose for uh, the use in universities for the study purpose once upon a time we used to have the original skeletons hanged in the biology lab to teach the 8th to 12th student but today we can make these kind of stuffs and those study models don't require uh, costly or uh, uh, real product of the same material so if you are going to make it with this kind of lamination then it becomes a possibility and uh, this one is quite faster the simple reason as you could see in one single stroke one layer is formed the speed of the laser movement is going to determine and uh, since you are going to have anything that is being converted into sheets as i said even today the aluminum foils we make the metal 3d print converted into a product so the greatest disadvantage is you have to be very cautious of cutting so that the previous thickness should not be cut so exact to the thickness of the raw material we just do it so let me show you how the lom works is the video visible now yes sir yes sir Thank <laughs> you. 
So that is with respect to laminated object manufacturing. So the next technology, as you could see, is once again, uh, from the liquids, we went on to the solid in the form of sheets. Now it is in the form of wires. So you could see anything that we are talking about. We are even having composite materials, not only the regular material as you could read here as ABS or for medical application, we have medicated APS. Today we are talking about nylon, peak, all these kind of materials that can be converted into wires. And those people who are doing research are now having their own alloys, components that are added to this. When you get the raw material in the form of powders, you mix it in either weight fraction or volume fraction, convert it using your ball mill and the extruders are there to get it got into wires. So once these wires are in the form of spools, you pass it through the nozzles. So this nozzle, the job is when it passes through, you have a heating mechanism. So the heating mechanism makes the particular whatever it is. In this case, you could see an ABS. That ABS material may have somewhere between 200 to 350 degree as the melting temperature. So if you could liquefy at that particular temperature, if that nozzle is set to have the heat up to that temperature, almost liquefied, you just have these rollers to pass through so that you have one more attachment at the tip of your nozzle, the tips. So through the tips, it just extrudes and allows the materials to flow on that particular layer. So here also you could see a building platform. This building platform is going to have the X and Y data. First few layers you are going to make using double sided foam. On top of it one or five layers you make it a support structure. On top of it you print the actual part. So the actual part, as you could see, is printed with the dark blue. Most of the cases today, the FPM machines also have the support parts made from the same material. But if you are going to go for a very functional part, which are going to be final manufactured part, then depending on the cost of the raw material, the support structure is made either with an alternative low cost material or of the same material. So always remember your CAD model is there. You are slicing it and that particular slice, the first slice is going to be at the bottom, second on top of it, third on top of it and topmost is going to be the nth layer. So you could see wherever there is a requirement which requires a huge part to be supported on top of it, you 
design your support structures in most of the cases today the pre processing softwares of all the hardware component be it sla be it lom be it your fdm be it your sls are your 3d printing automatically generates the support structure which is going to also give you the best orientation that would allow the entire part to be printed at the fastest time so the build time is quite important as well as the finish of the product is very important so which orientation in the particular build volume if i am showing only one part doesn't mean that at every workstation you build only one part in a single workspace i can have four or five different geometry product can be built at the same time so you are going to see which orientation for that particular geometry can be fitted into the entire build volume you see only the x and y the z is going to be the depth through which the build table can be moved down your nozzle is going to make the movement and the x and y the z is going to be moving down and you build it so statasis is the company that has been doing this for a very long time and similar to the other two process after the finishing product you take it out remove your support materials go for all the other stuffs and you can have this printed so you could see some of the critically designed components can be made and uh, today uh, specifically statasis is the world leaders and to just give you some introduction our own undergraduate students from uh, ceg they were able to make their own fdm machine at a very low cost way back in 2014 15 itself at the cost of not exceeding 30000 rupees and you could see the fdm machines are being even sold in the amazon platform not exceeding even 20000 rupees the maker bought so they are able to come out with low cost fdm machines all that you have to purchase is the materials like abs or whatever material you wanted to have the product printed and you have the design freedom of creating any geometry so that is fdm so let me show you a small video that <laughs> Fused deposition block, or FDM, is a layer additive manufacturing process that uses production grade thermoplastic materials to produce both prototype and end use parts. This technology is known to accurately produce future details and has an excellent strength to weight ratio. FDM is ideal for concept models, functional prototypes, manufacturing aids, and low volume of end use parts. The FDM process begins by slicing 3D CAD data into layers. The data is then transferred to a machine, which constructs the part layer by layer on a build file. Thin thread-like spools of thermal plastic and support material are used to create each cross section of the part. Similar to a hot melt glue pen, uncoiled material is slowly extruded through dual heated nozzles. The extrusion nozzle is precisely laid down to support and thermal plastic material on the preceding layers. The extrusion nozzle continues to move in a horizontal XY plane while the build platform moves down, building the part layer by layer. The finished part is removed from the build platform and cleaned of its support material. Raw FDM parts have visible layer lines. However, service providers of solid concepts offer multiple finishing options to create smooth, even surface parts, including hand sanding, assembly, and cosmetic paint. Since FDM parts are constructed with production grade thermal plastics, including ABX, polycarbonate, and Ultim, they are both functional and durable. FDM is utilized in a number of industries, including aerospace, automotive, industrial, commercial, and medical.
So uh, today we have a lot of uh, FDM machines and uh, you can very easily buy, have your CAD knowledge, just store it as .stl file. You can use your FDM printers. And there are open source softwares that are available like the Cura, where you can use it for printing in the 3D printer. So the next technology is where uh, the raw material comes in the form of powders. So as you could see, if I have the powders, I have the flexibility of making even micro level finishes. So the liquid, though it can be of micron size, the strength of the finished product need not be or would not be equivalent to that of the final product that I think about. But if I'm going to have the peak or nylon or any ceramic or for that instant, the same laser sintering, if I'm going to use melting, I can even have the power of the lasers increased so that the powders are from titanium. I'm going to make the same technology used. So how it happens, you do have a feed delivery or a powder delivery piston where the powders are going to be fed and uniformly rolled to the thickness that the laser would be able to sinter. So those parts that are being exposed to the lasers are getting sinters. The powders that are around it are going to remain loose. So the layer Thickness is determined by the power of the laser and the size of the powder. So once one layer is formed, you move down the fabricated piston. The second layer is formed, move down, third layer. So at every stage, the roller ensures uniform thickness of material that the laser can sinter it. And in this case, you could immediately visualize the powders are going to immediately, similar to your SLA, Though it could act as support structures, there are structures which may be heavy where the geometry requires sometimes the support structures. In this case also, the loose powders around the actual sintered part can be added similar to your LOM as the support structure. And uh, you should always remember these powders can be reused because the powders that are away from the actual sintered part are not going to be exposed to any laces. So there may not be any chemical or mechanical changes. But as I just mentioned, the laser sintering has also become melting and selective laser melting for uh, titanium and other things. As you know, when you are exposing it to more than 1400 degrees centigrade, there is every possibility the few microns from the actual melted part can be possibility of having its chemical and other compositions changed. So post-processing of the reusable powders is one of the critical things and of course I could see the Wipro getting pitched in to help you in understanding that. So your selective laser sintering today with uh, developments as I said with heavy or uh, high temperatures that can be controlled by the lasers, they are able to even make some of the ceramic and metal parts. And uh, already the patterns are out and people have started to make low cost uh, selective laser sintering and 3D printing machines. And uh, 3D systems is the one that presently have in the name of DTM sinter station. And uh, the greatest advantages, you could think of uh, having parts made to the exact finish, not much of post-processing is required. And as I just mentioned, even today, the metals, the titanium, the tungsten, all those things are also being made using this selective laser sintering, selective laser melting. And if that is what required, the heating source, instead of using lasers, there is one other technology, as we know, the electron beam. So if you are going to use electron beam, then the technology of converting these powders into final finished product is called electron beam melting. So that is also going to be seen. So let me show you a small video of selective laser melting.
As you could see today, the aerospace applications where the, these kind of assemblies are initially made from 10 15 parts are now converted into single just one stroke. So, those contact points are going to be the reasons of failures in many of the aerospace applications. And uh, fortunately, when we went to the Bipro in Bangalore, who are uh, also making these kind of research along with the ISRO and DRDO are printing metal components that are used in most of the satellite launches. And when you are going to use this SLM and uh, your EBM, you could see the metal 3D printing that has been uh, spoken very largely as of today. The cost is the only deciding factor for not many people using this in the low cost or medium scale industries. But when, if you are looking at the design freedom and uh, the strength of metal 3D printing, specifically using the SLM and EBM, the final finished product, as you could see, today from uh, additive, we can even call it as hybrid manufacturing, where the finishing process of eliminating and making it super smooth is already being done. We also go for heat treatment, post-processing of the 3D printed metal parts, as well as 
you could you easily qualify the design by using the non contact laser or cmm so that the assembly can be 100% perfect so that is with respect to your powder based uh, metal but how it all started as we know when we are trying to make the chapati doll the material when you had a possibly even a water it gets agglomerated it gets converted from what was a loose powder into a gummy structure so that is how the mit students when they started thinking of using this and spraying the gum a 2d printer sprays your laser powders or your 3d ink and you could see the ink getting deposited to certain thickness so rather than a ink if i am going to allow the glue to spray it using the pso electrics on to the powders naturally the powders are going to get agglomerated and by which the same pso electric as i know the same combination of rgb i can print any colors so on the powder which is white i spray a glue which attracts and makes it into that particular layer and on extreme magnification only you could see the pores so that inkjet printing is used in a different way to convert and have a 3d printed part and z corp was the first one who was making many things and even in our uh, uh, chennai gindi industrial estate there are very large uh, 3d printers that are made even by the hp so there are many people who have already come and making 3d printing very easy and versatile which are relatively low cost as compared to any other 3d printing because of the materials that are being used so there are uh, uh, n number of uh, applications and as i just mentioned with usage of uh, the materials the minerals the medicines we can 3d print for pharmaceutical applications 3d print for your uh, food 3d print for anything that you think about it so as i mentioned the only difference between your laser and the electron beam is you know the electron beam is to be operated in an inert environment so it has to be inside a enclosed chamber and as a result there is no possibility of any oxidation so the parts that are made using electron beam melting are relatively sometimes superior as compared to the sls so all the other process remains the same so you use your deflection coils to allow the electron beam to pass and as you could see the dark structure that is there is what that is being built so that is with respect to your electron beam and you could see the r cam from the sweden is the leaders in making the electron beam machines and uh, when you talk about uh, the sls this is a very costly process because you have to maintain a very inert temperature and also since you are going to have the temperature at very high naturally the operational cost and the maintenance cost are quite higher and uh, those that are required specifically for biomedical implants from the titanium 6al 4b are those that are required for the aerospace the nickel super alloys are the ones that are being mostly made from this electron beam process let me check if i have any videos for uh, 3d printing now thank you so coming to the multi jet so why i should just have only the process of using fdm why not i jet the material itself so i am going to have the build material in the form of liquid that once it just throws and i have a uv light to cure it on the spot that is the thought process of object o b j e t so they are the people who were able to come out with the, the multi jet modeling where different colored cartridges are available they print both transparent and the same uh, uh, solid kind of thing so if you wanted to see a kind of uh, stone inside a kidney the stones can be made 
with black color, the kidney can be made transparent. So specific to the usage in the biomedical field, I wanted to have rubberized materials, which actually it feels like a kidney or a liver. So those kind of things are made possible using this multi-jet modeling, where not only transparent materials, not only elastomeric materials, any materials that you think about are being widely used. And at AFRG, we do have a multi-jet modeling printer from the same uh, object, which is now taken over by the 3D systems and uh, has the capability to build 200 by 200 by 200 volume size materials. So as I just mentioned, we have also used this technology for uh, one of the orthopedic surgeon who wanted to have an operation on the spine. So the child that was having its head always looking down had a problem specifically on the spine. So to make it straight, they wanted to drill holes and place titanium screws to make the child look up after three, four operations. They wanted to make it slowly upper. So what we did was we designed the jigs and screws, as you know, through the spine, you do have very critical nerves going through. And if they are going to use even the finest piezoelectric drilling mechanisms, there is every possibility if it touches any of the nerves, the child can go to coma. So they simulated to the exact size with all the original CT scans. So for biomedical applications, you have the CT scans and the MRI scans. So you get that reverse engineered using the software called Magics and Mimics. So these Magics and Mimics can have the 3D CT scan and the MRI scan converted into a CAD model. So this CAD model, you refine it, convert it once again into slice layer data that is required for whatever be the process. In this case, it is the polyjet. So with that, you can print either with elastomeric materials or transparent materials or hard plastic and get it done. So most of the applications with respect to automotive, with respect to household applications or biomedical applications using your SLA, medical SLA are possible with this multi-jet modeling. And uh, to just have almost at the end of it, let me just give you introduction to the different materials. So be it liquids, be it in the form of wires, be it in the form of sheets or in the form of powders, you require plastics. And today, as I was talking about advanced plastics of peak and uh, nylons of higher superior grade, which can be directly used in an automotive application. Or if you think about printing metals and have the final finished additive manufactured parts, you can still print it. So you have all that is required to make it into a functional application or in the product design, you wanted to use it for making your concept models, you can print it. And uh, as of today, we have crossed 2020, more of the functional components are being made. And that we can come to know with the Gartner's hype cycle or the OLS report and uh, the materials, what was not possible in the early 2000 or 2010 has never been a hindrance today. Today, most of the components that are being built for the aerospace are being made from the 3D printing. And you could have also heard that Boeing are being using almost 50 to 60 robotic arms to build the entire aeroplane structure. So today you can print even carbon fibers and build the entire structure of an aeroplane in one single stroke. So you know, an aeroplane which has at least 1 million components can be 3D printed. So that is the level at which 3D printing has gone, where any complex geometry, any application you think about, not limiting yourself as a mechanical engineer, you can make it as a mere possibility. And what they say is by 2035, in another 15 years time, most of the hospitals may also have a 3D printer to print bio organs. 
so today you could see the extreme need to have the kidney replacement walls of your heart or any other components and as on today you should remember the external ears nose or the ortho implants can be made it's not an issue but printing the bio components like your liver your layer all the other organs is underway and it is under trial johnson and johnson are already leaders in this 3d printing of bio organs and that is a total large subject and i know there are people giving talks on that also and with uh, development as i mentioned not only in sla today from uh, large size printing to making it smaller to meso scale people are working on that and uh, in future even uh, the 4d printing i am going to just give an introduction is going to become a mere possibility so when you are looking at functional graded materials where through thickness i can have temperature gradient through thickness i can have electrical gradient everything is mere possibility as i could see the materials are going to be printed on micron scale on layer i can have identical material from a ceramic got converted to a gold on the top so that is also one other research area people are working to understand how this entire things are happening and with all great computation the quantum uh, computing with uh, developments in solar materials development in bio materials printing of these things in the future are going to become a mere possibility and i just said there is a possibility of even making it from 3d printing to 4d printing yes with respect to temperature with respect to time with respect to the environment the entire material can open up or close this is also been already done by our own material science student in our college of engineering gidi itself where they 3d printed on a small scale and with increase in temperature it changes its shape and with once again back to the room temperature it regains its shape so that is also a possibility and as i said what was seen in the year 2012 as the peak of the technology was 3d printing as you could see this hype cycle but as time passes in 2018 you could see 3d printing possibly available in retail segment itself so as the plateau is almost straightening it is already a mere possibility so if you are looking at the dark lines in another 5 to 10 years you are going to have 3d printing of drugs 4d printing which may happen by another 10 years and with bound materials and we are talking about blockchain technology virtual manufacturing industry 4.0 so this is the technology that is going to work in another 15 years and when you are talking about that you are going to see the 3d printers printing its own babies so that is how the people are talking about so remember the people not only have stopped with 4d printing they are also thinking about going and having 5d printing where two dimensions both time and temperature all things can be introduced and you may have it in near future so the latest gartner which i will to stop we have lot of technologies that are going to be coming up in the next 10 15 years but 3d printing is nowhere seen here because already the people have started to envision and work so with that let me just stop giving a brief consolidation where you know you require a cad model if you are a new designer you start with a cad model if you are a reverse engineer you have the reverse engineering data maybe from cloud points maybe from ct scan that cad model is going to be the first step that cad model with respect to the hardware you are going to imagine which orientation which support is required you slice it the data of individual slice you print it on the hardware how you print which material it could be a liquid it could be a solid in the form of wires or sheets or it could be in the form of powders 
and how you solidify it be it lasers of different quality or an electron beam or you are going to use your own low cost uh, even high temperature uh, focused lamps so if you are going to use it you started with understanding the 3d printing and when you visualize any of the application it is a mere possibility today as the materials have evolved the technology is already at the final stages so you can think of even developing your own 3d printers so that is the end of my presentation thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much for the very informative and wonderful presentation and uh, uh, special thanks for uh, uh, being flexible with our uh, delay in timings thank you very much sir uh, thank you now i uh, request the participant uh, to uh, be ready for the next session it will be about to start if you have any queries just uh, switch on your mic and you can ask the expert uh, you try to complete the question and answer session as, uh, as soon as possible because we are the session two is about to start any questions you can raise your question for the expert thank you Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Very, uh, for your very patient uh, uh, presentation and uh, informative presentation. Thank you for the delay happened during the beginning of the session that is due to a network problem at our local uh, center. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, participants, please.